Are you interested in finding old newspapers, whether it be for genealogy research or really for any, any reason? Old newspapers are a great window into the past. Not only can they give you great genealogy clues, they can also help you learn things about a community and um, research events, things like that. So if you're interested in finding old newspapers, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Amy Cross. I have been participating in genealogy since I was a teenager, which was a while ago. And I have been a professional researcher for over seven years. So I'd like to share some of my ideas and some of the things that I have been doing that help me in my research and newspapers are definitely one of those things. So whenever you're wanting to do genealogy research, newspapers can be super helpful because they can tell you specifics and details about your family that you may not have any idea otherwise. So let me give you an example. I was in Kansas where I had some family that lived in Kansas, a lot of family actually that lived in Kansas, and I was in a little historical society there and I found an old local newspaper. And in that newspaper, it talked about my great grandparents wedding anniversary party. It talked about who was there and the gifts that they received. One of the gifts was this cane and it described the cane. And I called my mom and said, mom, guess where that cane came, that cane came from? It was a wedding gift for their 50th wedding anniversary. So anyway, newspapers can be great. They've helped me break through. They've provided um, the maiden name, my hair's driving me crazy. They provided the maiden name of a relative. They've, they've like, newspapers can get you all sorts of information. So there's a super video that came out a week or two ago that Connie Knox did for Genealogy TV. And it's a great, great video about newspaper research, the different types of ways you can access newspapers online and where to find them and some of the things you can find in newspapers, highly recommend that video. I'm putting a link above so that you can watch that video because it's really good. I talked to Connie and I asked if it was okay if I mentioned her video in this and she said that'd be great. I just wanted to add a little something to it. She talked a little bit about some places where you can find out some resources for newspapers for a particular community, but I wanted to roll down into that a little bit farther and that takes a little bit of time. So this video is about finding those kind of hard to find newspapers, the ones that aren't on newspapers.com or some of those other newspaper sites that people go to all of the time to look at old newspapers. You may have been searching for your family members, but to be honest, the larger newspapers often aren't the ones that have the meat in them. It's those little community newspapers that can give you details about your family. So we're gonna talk today about how to find those newspapers. So let's get started. So one of the things that Connie talked about was um, the wiki pages on family search. So true, such a great resource. And I'm gonna go over those really quickly because they're part of finding these little newspapers, but then I'm gonna expand a little bit more into something that she didn't cover. I wanna start with the wiki page for Sedgwick County, Kansas, so that I can kind of show you. And then I'm gonna backtrack and I'll show you how to find this page. Um, one, you could just type a Google into a Google search Sedgwick County, Kansas genealogy, and you will find probably within the first three items um, the wiki page link for family search. That's how I do it. It's the fastest way for me, but I'll show you another way that you can do it. Um, anyway, when you go into these county pages, they'll tell you a lot of great information. The county courthouse, when records began to be collected, but if you need to scroll all the way down here to newspapers and it's alphabetical. Here we have newspapers and it talks about a lot of the sites that are great for newspaper research. One of them being newspapers.com and um, Ancestry, which owns newspapers.com. But anyway, there's two different sites there. Genealogy Bank, Newspaper Archives, Chronicling America, all great places to use the search functions to search for your ancestor's name. Highly recommend that. But they also have other things in there. They have here, they have this Dr. Edward Titan, Tyen, sorry, um, read and took notes from nearly every issue of Wichita's newspapers from 1872 to 1982. And if I click on this, it opens up a link into this page. And I can browse issues or I can search no, his notes. Wow, who knew about that? 
So that's a great source. Um, they also talk about other historical papers that may be specific to a particular location. That can be really helpful. But there's even more smaller newspapers that sometimes people don't know about. And so let's talk about that. Oh, I forgot. I wanted to show you how to find this if you wanted to find it the other way. So if you're on Family Search's website page, you can go here to search and go to the research wiki. And then you can click on a location. I'm going to North America. I'm going to go to the United States. I want to go to Kansas right here. And then I want to narrow it down. I can either look at this, which gives me some general information, or I want to narrow it down by county. I can either select it from the map or I can select it down here. And I had been in Sedgwick County previously. So that's a way to get to that page. So anyway, a couple ways to get to that page on Family Search. Now, let me go to the other place that I think a lot of people do not realize some really cool things. At chroniclingamerica.loc.gov, I'm gonna put a link in the show notes um, underneath in the show description, so you can go straight to that. So here is the main page of Chronicling America. And a lot of people will start putting something in there, the search words to search a family name or something like that, that's great. But this is a little trick a lot of people don't know. Go over here to newspaper directory, this is gold. So you hit newspaper directory and the way that I'd go about it, I don't search by newspaper title because I don't know what the titles are that I'm looking for. I'm looking for newspapers printed in a particular area that um, I may not be seeing on the other websites. So, and we're talking here about reasonably exhaustive research, right? We're talking about really diving into the nitty gritty to find those little golden nuggets that you may not be seeing on the big sites. So I'm gonna go here to states and we're gonna go ahead and continue to use Kansas. So I'm gonna use Kansas as my example and I'm gonna to go to Sedgwick County. And I'm not gonna select a city. And I want newspapers printed from 1690, which in Kansas there won't be any there. But I'm gonna to go to 1690 to 1900, let's say, because my family lived, let's say, in the mid 1800s in this area. And so I want to find out other information. I'm not gonna put a lot of other information in here. You can do that if you want to, if you have a particular, like you're looking for German newspapers or something like that, but I don't care. I just wanna get more information. So I'm gonna come down here to search. Now I am looking, there's 126 papers that were in that county that were being published in that county or that were servicing that county from 1690 to 1910. And I could have narrowed this down even further. So this first newspaper, The Daily Beacon, was published in Wichita, Kansas from 1872 to 1870-something. They don't know when it really ended. And so I have the information on this paper and I have um, who the publisher was. I know when it began. I know it was daily except for Sunday. And then there may be some notes about it. It was also issued in the weekly edition called the Wichita Weekly Beacon and things like that. So, and then it, the related titles, this gives me a link to that Wichita Daily Beacon that they were just talking about. But this is the one I want you to see holdings right here view complete holdings information i click on that and it's going to show me all the different places that are holding copies of this paper and this paper is a tiny paper it wasn't published very long and there's not very many surviving copies but they're all being held at the kansas state historical society in the newspaper project so i can click on this to view more titles from this institution I'll do that really quick and it shows all of the different titles that that historical society is holding. Whoa, there's a ton there, isn't that awesome? But I've gone back now to the page of the particular paper, the Daily Beacon we were talking about, and it shows that they have the October 18th, 1872 through the November 15th, 1872 editions, and then they have a few in 1873. Um, those are the original papers that they have there that you could, if you went in, you could see perhaps the original paper. And then they have microfilm copies as well. 
So I could go and I could contact them and I could say, oh, I wanna see these papers or you know, you could work with them. You could either go in and take a look at things or you can contact that rep repository and see if they will perform a search for you. Let me give you another example. So if I go back here and I go to, um, let's see, the Clearwater Sun in Clearwater, Sedgwick, Sedgwick County. So let's say I had family that lived that I knew they lived in Clearwater. Definitely want to be looking at this little Clearwater newspaper. So again, I have the name of the paper. I have the geographic coverage. I have the volumes. I have it was only, again, this paper, there were so many little newspapers that came and went during this time period. And that's why this is such a great resource that so many people aren't aware of. So this was only published for a couple of years, 1888 to 1890. This is a great time period, right? We have the 1880 census and we have the 1900 census and we have a big gap in between. So maybe you'll find some of the information that you're looking for in this newspaper. So one of the other things that they talk about here is that um, who the publisher was and again, related links. So they do have this title on newspapers.com. So that's good to know. So if I were to click that, I'm going to go over to newspapers.com and see which papers that they have here. But if I want to view the complete holdings information, maybe newspapers.com doesn't have all of them. I can then look at what institution is holding them. And again, we have this Kansas State Historical Society. So let me give you another example. So I'm gonna go back here to the newspaper directory search and I'm going to select Virginia which is, you know, most of our families eventually go somewhere back to Virginia. And I have some family that lived in Albemarle County. And I wanna look at really early newspapers, 1690 to let's say 1850, when our census records got a little easier to read. And I'm going to click search. There are only two newspapers that we're covering that are showing up in this search. So let's take a look at them. The first one is the Christian Intelligencer. And this was from 18 something to 18 something. They don't have a lot of information on this paper. Now let me look at that other newspaper. This gave you a little bit, it's got the same name, but it gave you a little bit more information. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know why they separate them like that. I don't know the answer to that. So this has another little fact in it that's pretty helpful. This, so this shows the geographical coverage. It shows that it covered Albemarle County, but it also covered Charlottesville. And this paper was published from 1844 to 1857. In the notes, it says that it's available on microfilm from the University of Virginia. And, um, and, it, and it provides some inf other information, but then it has succeeding titles. So and this happens a lot. So a newspaper kind of came and went, but a lot of times a different, maybe they changed the name, or it's a different publisher, they move the location, then it'll be listed separately. So I can click, click <laughs> I can click on the succeeding titles and then I can see the papers that came after that in the same county. But I want to look at the complete holdings. This one, we have them at the University of Virginia that like was mentioned in the notes and it shows you exactly what years they have. So this gives you a great idea of how to find those little tiny newspapers that may not be showing up in other repositories. Now newspapers.com and the other newspaper sites are so quickly gathering up newspapers and adding them to their databases on a regular basis. And it's not to say that newspapers.com or some of the other sites don't necessarily have papers that, the little papers that you're looking for in your community, because they might, but they might not. And if you wanna conduct reasonably exhaustive research, if you want to make sure that you're looking for all of the possible newspapers that are available, you wanna look at this site. You wanna check these out and you wanna look at those little newspapers that may have been published in your community. And I wanna add here, if you're able to do on-site research, a lot of times these newspapers, and, and there may be papers that are not included in this database. I think a lot of them are, but there may be some that aren't. So the final point that I would make to you is to check the library and the historical society or genealogical society of an area where, you're, where you've narrowed down your research. I have found a lot of old newspaper articles in those, like I was mentioning before for my family in Kansas, in those types of locations. The other thing that you might find, and where was this? This was in Wisconsin. I went to go up, I have three sets of grandparents, different grade levels, um, buried in the same cemetery in this little tiny community in Wisconsin. 
and I went there to visit their grave sites and to visit that community, and there was a, a public library there. So I go into the public library and I asked them about whether or not they had, you know, I explained why I was there and asked them about what they had that might be of help. And the lady goes, we have a bunch of information that's been gathered by the community and it's downstairs. So I go down in this basement of this little library and they had um, everything sorted into calling into cards, the card indexes, right? And so I pull those out and I'm looking up surnames and they had newspaper clippings of papers that are long gone that I, I wouldn't be able to find the paper necessarily anymore. I mean, they may not be in existence. They had little newspaper clippings as well as all sorts of other little things that had been collected over the years that were so random. But somebody had taken the time and put them into a card index. So I was able to find all kinds of stuff for my family. So never neglect those little libraries and the historical and genealogical societies of a community. Well, I hope this has been of help. Good luck in your research. Good luck finding your family in those small little newspapers because you'll find all sorts of fantastic articles. Have a great day. Oh, don't forget, please subscribe. I really appreciate it if you subscribe and like this video if it's been of help to you. And if you know of some great resources, put those in the comments. All right, now I'll get there. Have a great day.